Hey guys, it's Marco Schwartz here and in this video I will show you how to install WordPress on your own server using DigitalOcean and it will only cost you $5 per month. So as you might know, I recently have a lot of issues with SiteGround which was my hosting company for years now. So I was really satisfied with them but as I tried to grow my business, as I had more and more visitors, they told me to choose uh, a dedicated server but there were many issues that they just couldn't fix and basically they asked me to pay more and more and more it was never ending there was always a need for more power I didn't have more visitors but they were always asking me for more money so I decided to just leave them and try to install my own WordPress installation on uh, DigitalOcean so I succeeded after a lot of trial and error using Docker and WordPress and other images that I will show you in this tutorial. So really what I will show you is how to install your own WordPress install using DigitalOcean so you will get your own uh, dedicated server in the cloud for as low as $5 per month. So let's start. So the first thing we have to do is to create a droplet. This is basically the server on which your application will run. So for that, I will just click on Create Droplet here in the main DigitalOcean window. And now you have to do many choices. So for the operating system, I will just choose Ubuntu, which is a standard operating system uh, for DigitalOcean applications. Then you need to choose a size for your droplet. So here we'll only have uh, a standard WordPress site, we just deploy one site. So I will choose uh, the smallest possible at $5 per month. Uh, we don't need additional storage, uh, it's more than enough here. We can, sh you can choose wh whatever you want for the region, I choose New York all the time because most of my visitors are coming from the US. But if it makes sense for you, we can choose another region here. Uh, then you can add your SSHT, they have a very good tutorial about how to do that, so make sure you add your SSHT here, they will tell you how to do it. And you tell how many droplets, I just want one, and I will call it uh, WP test. It's invalid. Yeah, well, just like this. Okay, and now I can create my new droplet. So now it's been created, as you can see here. It usually goes fa quite fast. Good. So now, as you can see, my new freshly created droplet is here, and I can get the IP address. So I will simply copy that and I will need it in a moment. So now I will go to uh, a terminal over there and we'll see how to actually configure all droplets and install WordPress on it. So first I will log in using my root access. So I will just do ssh root at the IP address. Uh, do I want to connect? Yes. And now I'm connected on my freshly created droplet. So now I will be typing a lot of commands during this tutorial. Don't worry, I put it all under the article on my website, so you don't have to actually see in the video what I type. You will get it all in the article on my website. So the first thing we have to do is tell Ubuntu where to find the Docker um, software. So for that, we'll add the official uh, key for the software, which is this command here. Once that's done, we can actually tell Ubuntu where to find um, the Docker for Ubuntu, which is here. That's our version of Ubuntu here. So I will just add this here. Uh, let me just clear this so it's better here. And now, when that's done, you can just do uh, a sudo app apt apt get update which will actually add those uh, sources to 
our source for apt, which means whenever we want to install Docker, it will now be installed from there. And now I can actually install Docker with this instrument here. So Docker will be used here really to run uh, each software that we we'll need in a separate environment on our server. So there will be one for WordPress, there will be one for the database, there will be another one for a PHP MyAdmin, which will allow us to control the database. And finally, uh, we'll see that at the end of the tutorial, there will be one for engines, which will be used to basically direct the traffic to the right website in case you have many WordPress installations on your server. And now it will download everything and install the Docker on your uh, machine here. So now that's done. So DigitalOcean is using SSD drives and fast servers. So it's usually very fast to install software on, on there. Now I will just type this command here just to check the status of uh, Docker. And as you can see, it's actually active and running already. So that's great, meaning we can actually now run software on it. So from there, we should actually already run uh, WordPress inside uh, Docker, right? But we'll make something much simpler. Instead of using Docker directly, we'll use something that is called Docker Compose, which will allow us to make a script that will then run all the Docker containers that we need. So we'll just clear that again and type sudo apt-get install docker compose. Yes. And this will install this docker compose which we will use for to run all our containers in this tutorial. Great, so now it's done, uh, and I will just create the script that will then create all our container for WordPress site. So I will just do touch docker compose dot yaml, which is the um, format for this script. So now I check, I have this file here, and I will just open it using nano, nano docker compose. And I have my empty file. And in this file, I will really describe all my system around WordPress. So I will describe each container that I need for my WordPress site. Um, so first, I will create the, the container for my WordPress site itself. So I just add some reference code here that I will pass inside this, uh, this file. And I will tell you what it means. So you have a website. I just called my website website because I just want to show you it works here. The image is the official WordPress image for Docker. Then I will have a link to another container called WPDB, which we will create in a moment. I also say that I want the, um, all the files from the, this WordPress um, container to be copied and synchronized with this, this um, folder on my hard drive, on the machine. This means that I will then later be able to access that from an FTP client, for example, to move around files without having to go inside the container. I expose port 80, which is the default port for our WordPress. And then I give uh, the name of uh, my website, which is for website, also on the database itself. And I just give the, the root access of my database, which is some pass, like some password. So now that's just for the container uh, for WordPress. So this won't work like this because I actually don't have this database. And if I try to run it now, it will just stop because of an error. 
So now I need another container for the database. So MySQL also have an official image that we will use here for our database. And this is just old MySQL. And again here I just give the argument of the root password which should be the same as we defined before. So now I nearly get it all. And actually if I, if I were to run this, it will work already. However, I want something more here, just to launch my first web website. I want to be able to, to actually access this database without having to get into this Docker image here. So I will use a software that is very well known um, on all WordPress hosting companies, which is phpMyAdmin. So usually it's installed for you on a hosting company, but here I will show you to install it. It's very simple because there is also a, a Docker image for this. So it's simply called phpMyAdmin. I link it to this database that I created here. I run it on, on this port. You can use whatever you want if it's not 80. And as the environment, I connect that, as you can see, to the database here because I use a root access and the same password here. And I just say that it's a MySQL database. So now that's done, um, I should actually save this. So I will just edit and save here. So I will just check that it's been saved. So as you can see, I, I have my old script here. And now to run it, I will simply do uh, Docker, no, Docker compose compose up minus D. So the minus D is just here to say that I want to run this in the background so I can do all the stuff after that. So as you can see now it's downloaded naturally all the libraries, all the Docker images that we need uh, for our script. So now it's downloading the files for PHP MyAdmin. So now everything is downloaded and as you can see it created all the different images that I had um, defined in the strips. So to check that they are actually running I can just do a docker ps. So this will tell me all the containers that are currently running. And as you can see there are three like I defined in the script. There is a website, there is the admin and there is a database. So now let's simply try to access the WordPress site. So for that, I just need my IP address, uh, which is here. And I will just do in a web browser, type in the address, and validate. And as you can see, it doesn't work here. So what are we missing? Well, let's go back to the code. If I show you again the script, well, as you can see, we expose port 80, but we don't actually say that we want the IP address to point to this WordPress image. So what we still need to do is to have another container that will actually redirect uh, all the connections to the right uh, container. So for that, I will edit again this file. And I will add a fourth container with endings, and this will allow us to actually say that we want to direct to this image. So I will just paste this here. So 
So now I have this fourth image, which is called its proxy. Um, it will run on port 80 because we want to assess it from our main IP address. I will just delete that because I don't, I'm not using special configuration here. And now I need to add something new inside uh, this website, so inside the container for the WordPress site. I need to tell him that I want the main IP address to redirect to this website. So for that, I will add what is called a virtual host. So here, I will just add this under environment in my website. I will add virtual host with the IP address that uh, is the IP address of my server. And now again, I will save this file and I will run again uh, Dota Compose. So as you can see now, it's actually downloading the files for the false container that I defined, which is the proxy. And what it also did is not only created this uh, new container, but it also recreates the, the previous one because you changed one parameter. At, again, I can see with Docker PS that all my websites are running. And now I will again check on my browser to access this IP address. And as you can see, I now have a WordPress site. So just to show you that it actually works, I will just configure it. Uh, I will just give it website test admin whatever password. Uh, mark, yeah, that's my email. And I will click on install WordPress. And now WordPress is actually installed. So I can again go to the main IP address of my server. And I should have the default, uh, default WordPress site. As you can see, if you just click around, it's pretty fast. So compared to my previous host, for example, it's really, really fast. So if you follow this tutorial, you should not have a fully working WordPress site on DigitalOcean, so on your own dedicated server for just $5 a month. So of course, if you need to access all the code and all the comments that you saw in this video, just find the link to the article on my website below. It will take you to my website and you will find all the necessary steps that you need to take to also deploy WordPress on the DigitalOcean droplet. So really this method that you saw in the video can be extended to any number of WordPress sites. Of course, you will need to scale your uh, droplets accordingly. So for example, me, for all my websites, I'm using a single droplet and I pay $20 a month, but I have about 10 uh, WordPress sites. So if you have any comments or questions about this uh, video, don't hesitate, leave them below. So again, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.